Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make an 8x8 LED matrix robot eye box with using an ATtiny85 microcontroller and an HD16K33 8x8 LED matrix device and of course some cardboard. Let's get started. And these are the items you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need an ATtiny85 microcontroller, an 8 pin IC socket holder, a slide switch, a 3 volt button cell battery, a 3 volt button cell battery holder, a perf board, and two HD16K33 8x8 LED matrix, some cardboard, and some wires. And this right here is a schematic that you're going to need to follow to make for this project. Now let's go ahead and assemble this project and let's get started. First, I want to trace around the size of these 8x8 LED matrix so that way I can be able to make the two eyes of this robot. So far, I measured out the size of the face of the robot. And now I need to find the center of the eyes. Simply make an X and the center of the X will be the center of the eyes. And now take a measurement of the LEDs, looking at the exact size, so that way I can be able to make a proper square that is equal size of these LED matrix. Turn the LEDs in a 45 degree angle, and measure in a 45 degree angle, going from one corner to the other corner, so that way I get the proper size of these LED matrix. So far, it measures at 4.4 centimeters. Now what I need to do is go over to the center of the X, and to be able to find the exact size, I need to measure on each side of where the X is. On each point of the X, measure out a line that is measuring at half of 4.4 centimeters, which is 2.2. Now I made all four of the measurements. Now I can be able to create the square. Make the lines going across, which means now the LED matrix can fit inside perfectly. As you can see, putting it right here, it fits perfectly. And of course when I cut it, it will make it even smaller, so that way I can be able to fit it even better. There's also another technique. You can always simply take the LED matrix, put it in the very center of the X, and make a line going across on both sides. And this is also a second method that you can use to be able to fit the LEDs in perfectly. And now simply go to point to point and draw out the square. And there, a second internal square. As you can see, this method I actually prefer it seems to be more accurate. And now it's time to cut the pieces of cardboard to create the housing of this device. And there, now I have all of the pieces that I need for the housing. And now take an X-Acto knife and cut out the LED eyes. And there, now I have both eye holes cut out. The first one I did isn't very good, but the second one I feel like it's a lot better. Although it still looks okay, it still creates uniqueness of this robot. Now another option, I could have just simply cut out the exact size of the LED matrix and stick out the LED matrix all the way through, but I think putting it inside of it, in my opinion, looks a lot better. And now it's time to connect the bottom piece of this housing. And what I need to do is figure out the position of where I need to place the circuit. Trying to figure out where I want to put the 3-volt button cell battery holder. And I feel like placing it right here looks like a good spot. Placing it right here in the center is a very good idea. Simply trace the 3-volt button cell battery holder. Next, take the X-Acto knife and follow the lines and cut out the trace mark. And there, this piece is now cut out. 
Take the 3-volt button cell battery holder, and as you can see, it's a perfect fit. Leaving a little bit of gaps on the side, but that's okay because it can be filled in with glue. Since this part of the housing is the bottom part of the housing, I need to make sure that the 3-volt button cell battery holder is perfectly flush with the cardboard. Simply place it onto the workbench and press it down. Doing this will allow it to be perfectly flush with the bottom of the housing. And now it's time to connect the 8x8 LED matrix to the cardboard. Make sure I position it just right. Next, take a very small amount of hot glue and place it on the corner of the LED matrix. Just put enough to make it stick into the cardboard and not enough to see the glue. And there, as you can see, it sticks in place. Now take some more hot glue so that way it stays in place permanently. And now repeat the same process with the second 8x8 LED matrix. And there, she'll look just like this when complete. Next, I want to take these four colored wires and connect the two LED matrixes together, simply connecting the SEL to SEL, SDA to SDA, and VCC to VCC, and of course ground to ground. Next, remove the insulation on both ends of the wires. Next, solder 10 each of the ends of the wires. And now it's time to connect the SCL to SCL. Simply solder it into place, just like this. Sometimes a little extra solder is needed. And now SDA is soldered to the SDA. VCC is soldered to the VCC. And of course, ground is soldered to ground. And there, the 2 8x8 LED matrix is now connected. Next, take the perf board and the 8-pin IC socket holder. I'm going to solder in only one pin first to make sure it's flush with the board, and then solder the rest of the pins after that. Clamp it down, solder in one pin. Check to see if it's flush with the board, and it is, which means now I can solder the rest of the pins in place. Next, take the 3-volt benzo battery holder, place it onto the perf board. Clamp it down, solder it into place. Next, take the slide switch and solder 10 the two pins. Next, take these two wires and solder it to the slide switch. And now the wires are soldered to the slide switch. And I'll take the ends of those wires and connect it to the circuit. I want to connect one wire over to pin 8 and the second wire over to the positive terminal of the 3-volt Benzo battery holder. One wire to the positive terminal of the 3-volt Benzo battery holder, second wire over to the pin 8 of the IC socket holder. Next, I'm going to take these four colored wires, and this will connect to the ATtiny85, and then the opposite end will connect to the 8x8 LED matrix, so that way I could be able to connect the circuit together. And now remove the insulation on one end of the wire, make sure one end is longer than the other, because the longer end will connect to the ATtiny85, and the shorter end will connect to the 8x8 LED matrix. And I'll twist the wire on the longer end, because that will connect to the ATtiny85, solder tin the shorter end, and it should look just like this. Repeat the same process three more times. And now I have the longer end of the wire. This one's the negative wire, and it will connect to pin 4 of the ATtiny 85. The longer wire goes into the proof board a lot easier, which makes it easier to bend the wire over to pin 4, so that way I could be able to solder bridge it to pin 4. Solder it into place and solder bridge it to pin 4. And I'll take another negative wire and solder it to pin 4. And then solder it over to the negative terminal of the 3-volt button cell battery holder. Next, take this positive wire, and this will go over to pin 8. Clamp it down. Bend over the lead. Solder it into place. And then solder bridge it over to pin 8. And there, she'll look just like this. Next, you need to follow the schematic to be able to connect the wires to the correct position of the 8x8 LED matrix. As you can see, SCL connects to pin 7, which is right here, the green wire. SDA connects to pin 5. Next, 
Connect this wire over to pin 7, which will connect to the SCL. Place it in, clamp it down, bend over the lead, solder it into place, and solder bridge it over to pin 7. And now take this wire, place it over here on pin 5, and that will connect to the SDA. Bend over the lead, solder it into place, and solder bridge it to pin 5. With that part complete, I'm going to connect it to the 8x8 LED matrix. Now making sure that the wires are long enough, I'm going to take the circuit and put it into that bottom part of the housing. Stretching the wires over, you can see that they are the right length. That's a very good thing because I might have made a mistake by cutting the wires too short. And now it's time to connect the wires to the 8x8 LED matrix, following the schematic exactly. Soldering pin 4 to ground, pin 8 to VCC, pin 5 to SDA, pin 7 to SCL. And there, the wiring of the circuit is now complete. Take the 8085 and place it into the 8-pin IC socket holder. And now take the 3 volt button cell battery and place it into the 3 volt button cell battery holder. And there, the circuit is now complete. Let's go ahead and test it out. Turn on the switch, and there, as you can see, it works. As you can see, the LEDs light up, and as you can see, it's not working. That's because I need a new battery, because sometimes if you have a low battery, the animation does not move. So I have right here a fresh 3 volt button cell battery. Place it into the 3 volt button cell battery holder. Make sure it's turned off so I can show it as an example. Turn on the switch. Wait for it to start to animate. And there, as you can see, it works. And you can see that it is moving a little slow. That's because of the way the program is. So if I could figure out how to make the code move a little faster, that would be very useful. But so far, this is actually satisfying enough. Next, assemble the rest of the housing together, starting first with the bottom piece of the housing. Place it right here, just like this. Take some hot glue, put a line of hot glue on the bottom of the housing, and then glue this piece into place. Wait for it to solidify and make sure it stands up in a perfect 90 degree angle. And now take the circuit and place it in. And you can see that the 8085 is causing the circuit to lift up too much. So I needed to make some modifications. As you can see, I made a small mistake with the housing. I accidentally put it in backwards, but that's okay. It's an easy fix. Simply cut out that little notch so it fits in better. And I'll take a marker and mark where the 80 tiny 85 needs to be, and then cut out where the 80 tiny 85 needs to be, so that way it fits into the bottom part of the housing better. Doing this with the bottom part of the housing allows me to have the 80 tiny 85 exposed, which makes it easier if ever I want to reprogram it to be able to do a different type of animation. And, of course, with the 3 volt button cell battery exposed as well, I can easily change the battery if ever I want to. Carefully take the circuit and place it into the housing. Make sure the bottom part of the housing is flush with the 3 volt button cell battery, so that way it stands up perfectly. And now glue it into place so it stays in the same position. Put a generous amount of glue going all the way around. Next, I'm going to take the slide switch, figure out where I need to position it. I feel like placing it right here is a good idea. And now it's time to connect the back part of the housing, figure out where the position of the slide switch is going to go, use the Acto knife to cut the size properly. Next, take a generous amount of hot glue and place it on the bottom part of the housing. And I'll take the back panel of the housing, glue it into place. Make sure it's positioned just right. I have some excess glue, but that's okay. Simple cleanup. Place some more hot glue inside, so that way it gives it extra support. Make sure it stays in a perfect 90 degree angle. Wait for it to solidify. And there, it should look just like this. And now take the slide switch and place it inside of the hole. Put it in position. Take some more hot glue and glue it into place. Put a little bit here and a little bit there. 
Press it down, wait for it to solidify. And now it's time to finish the rest of the housing. Take these two pieces, put them on each side, and this top piece goes on top. Starting with the side part of the housing. As you can see, it's a perfect fit. Take some hot glue and put it on the perimeter of the housing. And now take the side panel and glue it into place. Wait for it to solidify. Take some more hot glue and place it in the inside, which will give it extra structural support. And now repeat the same process on the opposite side. Next, take some more hot glue and put it on the perimeter of the top part of the housing. Take the top panel, glue it into place, wait for it to solidify, and there, the project is now complete. As I said earlier, I have easy access to the ATT 85 If I ever want to reprogram it, I just simply pull it out. And of course, I have access to the 3-volt button cell battery, and I can be able to change the battery whenever I need to. Turn on the switch and test it out. And there, as you can see, it works. And I can easily turn it on and off. Now see how this looks in the dark. Ah, as you can see, this looks amazing in the dark. Wait for it to do its animation. And there, it's starting to blink. And as you can see, this works very well. Also looks very good in this position as well. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own 8x8 LED Matrix Robot Eye Box with using an 80 85 microcontroller and an HD 16K33 8x8 LED Matrix. Thank you for watching Sci-Dye Tech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, click on the bell icon to be notified of future Sci-Dye Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.